Hello Miller family, my name is Brad Phillips, I'm with Puppy Steps Training and we're going to be doing Butch's demonstration for you today. We're very excited to send him home, uh, he's a wonderful dog and I think you guys will uh, love him and be impressed with the way that he's turned out, I know we're really happy with him. And so we're going to get just jump right into it, uh, but before we go through the five steps, um, just something that I'd like to remind everybody is that he is a puppy as well as he is a living animal and so because of that of course he's subject to um, stress and to different environmental conditions and so to be patient with him especially for the next two weeks as he transitions into your home uh, it is very stressful on a dog and so if he does struggle with a few things take your time don't get frustrated if you do get frustrated step back and just end training session but one thing is you always want to make sure that you end on the correct behavior. Sometimes you might have to shorten that behavior if it's a stay or ease the distractions, things like that. Um, and if you do have any questions about anything we talk about, please don't hesitate to call me. We want to make sure that you have the best success with, with Butch coming into your home as possible. So as we go through this, you're going to hear me use the word OK quite a bit. That is our marker and our release word. And so it marks the correct behavior and releases from a stay. You also, you might hear me use the word no, which is our correction term. And for that, I treat it kind of like a misdemeanor felony. If he does something wrong, but yet it's just like a simple uh, mistake, like breaking a stay, I'm going to tell him no and I'll make him do it again. Uh, but if he does something a little bit more serious, like jumps up on me or tries to steal food out of my hand, you have to be a little bit more firm with correction. And so the way that you do that is when you say no, you change your voice fluctuation and your body language because those are two uh, indicators that a dog reads um, the most basically. That's how they're going to tell what you expect and what you're meaning. And so you should never have to use a physical correction uh, in order to correct your dog. So now we'll get into the program. Like I said there's five steps. The first is socialization, then we'll get into manners, obedience commands, house training, and leash training. And so the socialization, that's one of the most important things for me. That's when a dog decides what he's afraid of and what he's not. Basically, so if we do socialization right, we're going to protect against having an anxious, an aggressive, or a timid dog. And so what we do is for the first two weeks that we have a puppy, we send them home with a family whose sole purpose is to take them around different places, different animals, sounds, um, textures, anything that, that can really throw off a dog. And so he's been exposed to cows, horses, chickens, cats, other dogs, um, as well as around loud noises, car rides, things of that sort. Um, we also try and focus on that throughout the training, doing his commands not only in here on the hardwood floor, but on the bed, on the grass, on the road. Like I said, just little things like textures can really trip a dog up. Uh, so then we'll move into our manners. Now, first off would be his gates and his doorways. So anytime I let him out of the crate or through the house door, I expect him to stay. Now, this should be an automatic behavior. I shouldn't have to tell him. Uh, but going back to what I said, he is a puppy and he's liable to make those mistakes. And so if he ever does try and break, I might shut the door or block him and expect him to hold that stay. So we're going to let him out. Okay, good boy, good boy. And I'll show you that I expect that same thing when we go through the house door a little bit later. Um, but also you'll notice that immediately he came out and sat. And so that's another one of our manners, this is greeting. Anytime I call him to me, come here. I expect him to sit as an automatic behavior before he gets any attention. Um, so what that does is, one, it gets him planted in front of you. He's not gonna wrap you up with the leash. But the most important thing is you're gonna get his eye contact. Uh, for a dog, they have a single track mind. So whatever they're looking at, that's what they're thinking about. And so if you have that eye contact, you have 100% of his attention. Uh, next would be his mealtime manners. So anytime I feed him, I expect him to hold sit, stay. Stay. Now during this time, it's great to really work on those stays. We have what we call the three Ds. And that's distance, duration, and distraction. And so adding those three things um, just make for a really solidified stay. And so talking is a great distraction. 
We can move his food bowl. Just anything to really lengthen those stays. Okay, good boy. Now, with his meals, we feed him about a cup and a half twice a day. In the morning, it's a little bit variable just because we want to, a lot of times we want to work with them, so we like that food drive to be high. At night, we try and feed them as close to 6 o'clock as possible. That way, they have a good four hours to clean out their system before they go to bed. Now, another thing we like to do with his meals is spend a lot of time sticking our hands down in his food bowl. And I don't want him to be aggressive towards me at all. And because a lot of people will think they have just the kindest dog in the world and then they're surprised when a toddler crawls up and sticks their hands in their food bowl and uh, gets growled or nipped at. So we want to protect against any of those mishaps happening. And so along that, those same lines, we spend a lot of time just handling our puppies. And so that includes the ears, paws, um, the tail, just any areas of a dog that could be sensitive, we want to make sure that they are not aggressive over being handled. Uh, that makes it really nice when you have to take him into the vet and he has to get his nails trimmed, anything like that. And we really try to protect against having any type of aggression, whether that be over food, over toys, um, or towards children, things of that nature. And that's also um, one of my main suggestions is that when he does play with children that they have a toy that they can run around with or play. That way if he wants to play along they can either throw the toy when he gets close or they can dangle it off to the side and he can grab onto it. But it's going to protect against him grabbing an arm or a pant leg or anything like that. So a couple other things that we work on in this section one of the most important matters to me is jumping and so we've worked very hard on that i want to make sure that a dog's not going to jump on me and so for him we've installed the command off if he ever tries to jump on me or jump up on the table anything like that i tell him off and expect him to get down now if he does come running up to me and i can tell that he's just going to jump or he finds someone in your family that he wants to jump on the important thing is that you never step back as soon as we step back, you're encouraging that jump and allowing him to keep coming at you. Instead, I want to step into the jump. That way, I'm or restricting the space and making it impossible for him to get up on me. And if he does jump up, I'll just bring my knee into his chest. Um, that's a, if you can flip the dog onto their back, that's a quick sign of dominance towards them. And of course, dogs have that pack mentality to where you are going to have to establish dominance. He's going to have to see that you are the alpha in his pack. And so it is very common for a dog to pick out a, a child or a family member that they think is lower than them in the ranking order. And that is going to be the person that they want to jump on or they want to take food from. And so one, if they're jumping on him, a great exercise is I would take him by the leash and I'd walk him up to that person. As soon as he tries to jump, I'll just give him a simple uh, leash correction, which is just kind of two pops on the leash tell him off and I'll turn and walk the other direction and then I'll walk back up again. I'll do that three or four times until he walks up and sits down in front of them. Another quick way to establish um, kind of those rankings is whoever he jumps on or takes advantage of have them control the food because in a pack um, the alpha always controls the food. So um, another one would be chewing. And that's a big one because he is a puppy and he is currently teething and he will be teething on and off for the next couple months. And so he's going to need to chew. And so with that, or because of that, we train on a base of avoiding and replacing. If you can avoid giving him free access to shoes or toys, that's going to save you a lot of trouble. But that's not always possible in your home. You're always going to have a bed or a pillow, something that he can chew on. And so that's when replacing comes in handy. So if you see him go up and he decides to chew on his bed, I'll tell him no and I'll give him something soft like the squirrel that he's playing with right now. If he tries to chew on a table leg, I'll tell him no and I'll replace it with something hard like a bully stick or a, a bone of sorts. And don't, well, let me back up. Basically boredom 
is kind of the cause of a lot of your problems. If the dog's bored, that's when they're going to want to chew. And so if you do have a downtime where he's just going to be laying around, just give him something to chew on. But the important thing is when he's done, take it away. You don't ever want to just leave his toys out because then he'll get bored with them and he'll move on to something else to chew on. Uh, let's see. Next would be drop it. And so drop it, uh, I expect him to do it out of being well-mannered as well as I expect him to do it on command. And so it's important that he just physically releases whatever he has. We'll let him get a hold of that. Drop it. Good boy. Good boy. Just make sure that he opens his mouth and physically releases it. Now, especially with soft toys, you want to make sure that you're never pulling it from him. Because with him teething, you can end up injuring him, as well as then it just turns into a game. And so if he has something that he just absolutely does not want to give up, there's a couple ways that you can do this. One is I just take it on both ends. And that way, you can hold it really still, make it very unappealing. And if he decides that he still wants to try and pull it, I can just twist my knuckles in. And it just pinches his lips uh, against his canines, just makes it uncomfortable, and he'll spit it out. Huh? Okay. So our last manner is gently, and that's in place just for him to be aware of his teeth. And so he's very driven by food, and so I want to make sure that he's not going to bite me or he's going to just accidentally catch me with his teeth. And so if he's really excited, I'll tell him gently before I even give the treat to him, and I just expect him to be very careful taking the treat. And if he did it, is a little bit too excited and lunges for it, I'll just pull it back and say gently, gently. And I just want to make sure that he's going to be very cautious taking it. I'll also make sure that I always give a treat to him in the palm of my hand. That way if I need to, I can close my hand and restrict the treat. As well as it, uh, well, if you give it to him between your thumb and forefinger, you're just asking him to bite you. And so come here. So. Gently. Good boy. Good boy. So now we'll move on to our commands. So our commands, we have um, eight big ones that we really focus on in this section. The most basic ones are watch me and come, and then we'll cover sit, down, sit, stay, and down, stay, and then crate and go to bed. So um, come and watch me, we teach from day one. Those are our most elementary commands, and those are uh, can be very important ones and they go kind of hand in hand. And so watch me is just strictly to get his eye contact. Watch me. Okay, good boy. Just getting him to look at me. And that's a great one for you to practice because it gets him used to the way that you say things as well as the way that you say okay, which is a marker to him being rewarded. And so you can just sit here and just get his attention elsewhere. Watch me. Okay. And do it a handful of times, one after another. Now a lot of people think that's a kind of a silly or an interesting command, but the reason for it goes back to when I was talking about his greeting. If you have his eye contact, you have 100% of his attention. And so if that command is in place and there's always a reward attached to it, he's going to respond 100% of the time or close to. And so if he's running outside and you just need him to look at you, you can throw that out there and expect him to turn around and look. And this, our second most elementary command would be come. Come. Just getting him to come to you. Now, that's one, or, yeah, that's one command that everybody kills almost right off the bat. And that's because when do you call your dog to come? Either it's because they're doing something they're not supposed to, out running around, it's time to leave the park, um, just things of that sort to where that they can build a negative association with the word very quickly. And so then when you need them to come, they're going to associate that with leaving and so they're not going to come to you. And so I keep a very strict rule of 10 to 1 on that to where I'm going to call him to me 10 times just to give him a reward and let him go again for every one time I have to call him to come. That way when I really need that command, um, the integrity is still there and he's going to respond. As well as, uh, you can make it a really great game. I'll get a lead and I'll take a toy or a treat and I'll throw it out there and as soon as he gets to it, I'll call him to come. 
when he gets back, I'll throw another tree. And so it's kind of a back and forth game that turns out to be really fun for them, as well as you're really working on that command. And as well as the off-leash walks are a great time to work on that, and we'll actually talk about that in a minute. Uh, the next three commands have hand signals, and so let's sit, which is a scoop over the nose, down, which I'll just take my hand flat and go down, and then stay is just a stop sign. And so we'll get him up, okay. sit, down, stay. Okay, good boy, good boy. Now, if it helps you remember, the sit command is I would take their food bowl and I'd lure it above their nose until their hind end went down and then I'd mark it. And of course the down there, when we start out, they're just following your hand down to the ground. And so not only does he have a down state, but I also have a sit state. Stay. Now with those, if I put him in a sit state and he lays down, I'm completely fine with that. But if I put him in a down stay, he's never allowed to come up. As soon as he comes up, I'll make him do it again. Okay, good boy. And also with those, the tree always comes at the end. Uh, that's kind of a, well, it is a signal that you're done. And so you don't need to treat him for sitting and then laying down and then for staying. So the next two commands, crate and go to bed, they don't necessarily have hand signals, but a lot of time I'll put myself in a position to where he can read my body language. And so with crate, I might just step towards it and point. Crate. And also for these two commands, I'll give him the treat. Huh? Um, why he's in the crate or on the bed, just because being released from that stay uh, or being released out of the crate is a reward in itself. Okay. Boy. Crate. That's how he kept wanting to break. We'll do that one again. Okay. Go to bed. Now for go to bed, I don't care what position he's in, as long as all four paws are on the bed, as well as he's expected to stay. Okay, good boy. Good boy. So now we'll talk about his crate training and his house training, and I'll give him a toy just to chew on because it's a little bit more talking and less interaction for him. So we have spent a lot of time making sure that he's comfortable in the crate um, and that we don't have any accidents in the crate. So right now he's good to sleep through the night, 8 to 10 hours, uh, without needing a break. Now, with that being said, uh, the first couple nights with the tran or the transition, it's very common for a dog to get a loose stool, get diarrhea, and so if he whines, you might want to let him out, let him go to the bathroom, and then put him right back in. Uh, but after a couple days, I would stop doing that just because you don't want him to recognize that he can whine and get away with uh, getting out of the crate. Drop. Good boy. Good boy. Um, also, he's good to be in the crate for four, right around four hours during the day. So if you need to run some errands, you can put him in there. He'll be perfectly fine, and he shouldn't have any accidents or need any breaks. Now, also, if he just consistently keeps whining in the crate, and he's just a little bit uncomfortable, you can throw a blanket over it, just to make it a little bit darker, more den like It also helps uh, comfort them in there. So yeah, next we'll talk about our house training. And so with that, right now, uh, we set a standard that he should be good in the house for two hours without needing a break. Now you're gonna wanna shorten that when you get home, kinda ease him back into that amount of time. 
but he also knows how to ring the bell. He knows what it means and where he's allowed to go. And so a lot of that's going to have to transition back over to your house. He's going to have to learn where he can go to the bathroom, where the bell is in your house, and that it means the same thing for you that it does for me. And so there's a couple ways that, that we teach the bell. And I'm going to give you my favorite way, it's a little bit easier for me. Uh, and I'll actually just show you because you're going to do this again at your house. Now our, our sole purpose in doing this is to get him to ring the bell as many times as we can in a short amount of time. So he's seeing where the bell is at your house. He's getting a lot of repetitions, ringing it and going outside and going to the bathroom. And so to start, this is how we teach him the bell, is we turn it into a game. And so I would stand here with a handful of treats and I just hang it right in front of his nose. Okay, every time he touches it, I'll say okay. 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 So I'll do this a handful of times and then I'll move over to the door. And I'll get right next to it and I'll just hang it and do it a couple more times. Okay. Okay. And then I'll hang it on the door and I'll sit here. Okay. And I'll do it a couple more times and then I'll switch to use the word outside. 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 And so now I'm going to take him out when he rings it. Outside. Let's go outside. Okay. Now when I'm outside, I'll just repeat the word outside uh, every once in a while just because that is our marker word and it marks the behavior of going to the bathroom. Outside. Easy. Outside. Outside. And if he doesn't go, we'll just go right back in. Let's go. Does go make it very positive, very rewarding. Great, right. let's go. Okay. Now it's very important that you never let him play um, while you're outside taking him to the bathroom because then you can get a dog that will ring the bell every two minutes because they want to go outside and play. And so anytime he rings it straight out, pace around for a minute or two, come right back in. When he goes, make it very rewarding and really emphasize the word outside. With doing all the repetitions of ringing the bell, it's important that after you bring him in, do that four or five times. Just stand there by the bell, let him ring it, go outside. And if he doesn't go the first time, I would do it until he does go to the bathroom. That's just giving you a, a lot of opportunities to go outside. And when he does go, he might get really rewarding. As well as it makes him really like to ring the bell. Let's go outside. Huh? Okay. Okay. Let's go. Okay, get outside. Good boy. Oh, let's go. Okay. Um, 
Also, I would, uh, I would look for signs that he needs to go to the bathroom. And so when he's in your house, if he wakes up, I would take him out. If he just randomly gets up and starts sniffing real heavily, take him outside. Um, as also, after you've done that a couple times, and you, well, done it like four or five times, I would set a timer for 30 minutes. And I would take him out every 30 minutes at your house for the first uh, couple hours of the first day, just so that he's not having an opportunity to go to the bathroom in your home. And then I would start to increase that to 45 minutes to an hour to two hours, uh, back up to a standard. And if you have any questions with that, please let me know. We'll be glad to help you through the house training because that is a big portion of it and we want to make sure that you have success. And so uh, now we'll move into our leash training. And we're actually going to go outside for that again. Huh? Let's go. Cool. Drop it. Good boy. Let's go. Cool. Oh, oh. Okay. With our walks, we take them on two types of walks. Uh, the first would be an off-leash or a long-lead walk. That's just a walk for him to be a dog to where he can run and play and, uh, and sniff. And so for the first little bit, I would keep him on just a long lead and I would call him back every minute or two, making sure that he's responding and he's checking in. The second type of walk is an attention walk, which is what I'm gonna demonstrate right here. It's a very basic heel, making sure that he's walking next to me, he's paying attention to me, um, and he's not pulling. Now if he does try and pull, I'll tell him easy and I'll give him a little leash correction. But you also want to pay attention to when he's actually pulling versus when he's just kind of finding the end of the leash. Um, you don't want to give him a real hard leash correction or anything like that if he's just kind of exploring a little bit uh, and not necessarily pulling. The other command is let's go just signifying we're going to move. And so let's go. Please, if you have any questions, make sure to, to give me a call. We'll make sure that we work through it or make sure that you understand. But thank you for the opportunity to train Butch, and I'm sure you'll love him.